Hi, this is one video in a series of videos that will help show you many of the features of Oracle Apex Application Express version 5. And we will use Apex to build a prototype application based on a database in Oracle XE. If you want to work along with the videos, you can get the scripts that will enable you to do that from the URLs shown here. The first URL is case sensitive, so make sure you use a capital letter when it shows a capital letter. From there, you can download the uh, scripts directly. If you'd rather have the scripts emailed, you can go to the second link and use the contact page to request that the scripts be emailed to you. I'm getting ready to create some objects, some tables, sequences, and other things in the database. Right now I'm logged in as Ashwini. I know that because I can come up here and look at the account logged in as Ashwini, one of the designers of this application. Let's take a quick look under SQL Workshop Object Browser and see what exists right now before I run any scripts. What we have are some tables that were created when Apex created the workspace and we're going to ignore those. I could look at other categories of objects such as sequences and there was one created by uh, the administrative function when it created the, the uh, workspace and I have things like triggers. When we come back we'll see things that have been created when we run the scripts. So I'm going to go back to SQL Workshop but pick the um, SQL scripts feature and from this I will upload one of the scripts. So click the upload and do choose file and go into a folder with scripts. Now the names will probably be the same but if they're different look for the one that says create. So I'll select that and upload and the script has been uploaded. Over here to the right I have a run option and I want to click that. And I now click run now, not the run in background. So I want it to run immediately. And it's very important that you click to the far right under view results. So when you click that scroll down and it shows 16 statements processed, successful, and most importantly zero with errors. So now if I go back to SQL Workshop at the high level and go into Object Browser and look in Tables, you now see things that weren't there before. Attendances, evaluations, eval items, and so on and so forth. Let's take just a second and look at the data model that these tables are based on. So the scenario for the tutorial is that there's a teacher who wants to do a better job of keeping track of information about teams. Projects are assigned to teams and then students are assigned to teams and students after working together for a while on a team can do evaluations of each other so students as an evaluator or an evaluatee can complete an evaluation. They would score on eval items and the eval items would be things like listens well, uh, works well with the others, attends meetings on time, prompt to meetings, that kind of thing, uh, technical skills. So the student can do an evaluation on another student on the team and enter the score which is represented here. Students can also attend professional development workshops and that's represented by these entities here. So we have several one-to-many relationships. So interestingly though what we have here is a situation where we have two entities and two different relationships between those entities. One re relationship represents the evaluator and one relationship represents the evaluatee. But these are all one-to-many relationships and that's the basis for the tables that you just built with your scripts. And back in our Apex development environment in Object Browser, 
I'm going to change the view to sequences and you'll see that sequences have been created for the tables. A sequence is a special table that generates a unique identifier for the particular table that it's assigned to work with. So we have a sequence to give us the attendance ID, we have a sequence to give us a team ID, and these will be unique. We need, in order to get those values and put them into a record anytime we add a team or add a student, we are going to need triggers. And what we see here are not the triggers for our application. So Ashwini is going to go back to the SQL scripts and upload another script. And that would be for the triggers. And then run that. Oh, this one here and run now and then check the results eight statements all successful no errors so if we go back to object browser and look under triggers we'll see that we now have those triggers so those triggers are little bits of code that are going to when you try to add a record to one of these tables the trigger will then go to the sequence grab the current value which then gets incremented and the trigger will insert that value as the primary key value uh, for that row that's being added. You can actually see the code by clicking the code tab and seeing the uh, PLSQL code that would do what I just described. Go get a value from the sequence and insert it into the new primary key field for the record that's being added to the table. We're going to go back now to SQL scripts and upload and add data. So we'll upload another script and we'll ins that'll be the insert script. Now it was very important that I have the sequence and the triggers created before I run this insert into script because as I was just saying the unique ID value is going to be inserted automatically with a combination of the sequence table and the trigger code. So I'll go ahead and upload and click run. Run now and view results and scroll down. No errors. So let me just mention that if something went wrong, if you did things out of sequence, uh, out of the uh, incorrect order, there is a drop script that will drop everything that's been created. And so you could start this over if you needed to, because if you're getting any errors, you need to make sure that those scripts run without errors. So don't proceed without having everything run successfully without errors. We can see that we have data in the tables by going back to SQL Workshop, then Object Browser, and then selecting a table, which I didn't do before to show you that it was empty, but now that I select one, I can select the Data tab, and I'll see that I already have data in that table. So that's what that last script did for us. In the next video, we'll look at how to create a table without having a script to manually create a table in Apex.